to Let's Make a Game, a channel about making computer role-playing games using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. In this video, um, I'm going to continue talking about the adaptation that I've been doing of the board game Source of the Nile. And in particular, I'm going to talk about how I have become dissatisfied with its uh, system of movement points and I decided after recording and posting the last video that I was going to change it to one that was more detailed and um, I'm going to show you uh, show you that in this video and explain why I made that decision. So we can see the opening screen here it's the same as it was in the last video um, it says that the the uh, area outside the city is going to be swamp and uh, that we have to remind us that we have to have a foot expedition because um, canoes and horses can't navigate the swamp. So we press continue and let's say we decide to be to set out at a normal pace. This screen again is the same as it was before. Um, let's say we decide to set out at a normal pace. Okay, so now we have a, um, oh, you probably also noticed that I've changed the name of the game. Um, it was provisionally titled Into the Hollow Earth, and I've changed it to Into the Unknown, um, but I forgot to change it when it came to uh, encountering locals, and so I've, I still, it still says you come across a group of hollow worlders, which sort of maybe doesn't make sense in terms of the theme change, but... Anyway, that's not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about the main change, which is it's now telling us we have 20 movement points. And we have this mile by mile report. And it says testing only because this one I definitely intend to get rid of as soon as I um, am satisfied that it is working the way it should be. Um, so we have 20 movement points. And one mile inland, we're in the swamp, we have 16 movement points. Then it says two miles inland, we have 12. Three miles inland, we have eight. Then we have a check to get lost. So as you can see, we're not checking. It's Before we were going, like, each space was, was 10 miles, and we were checking whether we were getting lost each time. You can see that this time we're going mile by mile. We're obviously not um, checking whether we get lost each turn. In fact, it's... Um, it's random, as I'll demonstrate later in the video. So, naturally, having a 6 in 6 chance of getting lost, well, naturally, we did get lost in the swamp, and this means that um, we lose all our movement points. And having rolled an 8, we also, we also triggered a, a check for um, whether we encounter any locals, and we rolled an 8, and it says that indeed we have um, we have come across a group of them, and because uh, I haven't coded what happens uh, when you meet people, um, that will probably be next. Um, that's just it; just ends there. Um, so the the change that you will see is that we're looking at every mile, or it's it's um, sort of calculating mile by mile, and that these checks about whether you get lost or whether you meet people are. You might think it's every three miles, but it's actually if you only did one test. But it's actually uh, it's actually random. So let's have a look at the code, and I'll also talk about why um, why I was dissatisfied and why I made the changes I did. So let's have a look at the code. Um, so. Source of the Nile is, of course, a board game, and there's a limit to how many how many checks you can have um, in a given turn before something happens. Let, let's have a look at um, this one. Imagine if we moved. We had twenty movement points. We moved one mile inland. We reduced our movement points by four. Imagine if we were playing a board game and we did this. 
We move one mile inland, we look up how many movement points we have to lose, and we see that because it's swamp we lose four. Then we move then we move two miles inland. We go, okay, we get rid of another four. Then we move three miles inland, we get rid of another four. Each time we're rolling to see whether we have to check whether we're lost, and we're also checking to see whether we have to check to see if there are any inhabitants. Um, that would be very tedious, um, especially because it's usually going to take far um, far more than this before anything happens. So let's have a let's have another another look. Um, we'll do another foot expedition. So this time we're going through forest. And let's say we go normal again. So you can see this time we got four miles inland before before anything happens. And if we try again, what are we going through? Going through forest again. This time we got through five miles before we before we met anyone. So we'd have to sort of do this whole whatever this routine is. We'd have to do it five times before you know before there was any sort of real development in the game. That would be very that would be very tedious. But this is a computer, and we can just get the computer to do as many of these. They could do a hundred of these, and it'd be fine. We'd just be sitting here for a fraction of a second before we got a report, because of course we're not. This says, as a, as the testing only indicates, it's not going to go. You're one mile inland. You're two miles inland. It'll just report to you. Okay, five miles inland, you come across a group of hollow worlders. Um, and so we can we can have sort of any number of. Let's try another foot, and let's be reckless this time. Okay, I'm actually um, running into a lot of. <laughs> I'm running. I'm not quite making the point that I want to make because I'm running into a lot more, um, a lot more people than I expected to. So, okay, so here's a good example. This time, we we got to eight miles, and we didn't meet anyone. So we we would have had to go one mile, lose four movement points. Do I have to see if I get lost? No. Do I have to meet anyone? No. Two miles inland. Do I have to? No, I didn't meet anyone. No. No danger of getting lost. Three miles inland, and foot, and so on. Like doing that eight times, and then going, uh, no, we didn't meet anyone, and we didn't get lost, and that's the end of our turn. Would be, you know, not a great game. But because it's a computer, we can say all, all, all the someone playing this would get would be eight miles inland, you make camp and go hunting. Hunting is another um, little subroutine in the game. You you have a chance of um, of finding more rations as you go. Um, and again that's something I'll deal with in a future in a future video. Um, but so we can be a lot more detailed with a computer game than we than we can than we can with a board game. And I found that there were some weird there were some weird things going on with um, the movement point system. Uh, first of all, there wasn't. It treated every terrain the same. So moving through mountainous jungle was the same as moving through uh, moving across plains, and that didn't seem right to me. So I wanted some terrain to be treated as harder to travel across than other terrain. Um, and um. There were some weird consequences, like if you have a canoe expedition and you don't have many bearers, you can lose movement points. But because you get a set amount of movement, like you might say, okay, you've got a minus three penalty to movement points. But because you'd only get two movement points if you're moving cautiously, that effectively means you can't move cautiously. If your canoe is... Um, or if you have too few bearers, you have to move. You you have to move normally or recklessly, and you can't move cautiously. It didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me as to why that was the case. You should be able to still move cautiously. It might be a bad idea. You might not get very far, but there's nothing in the fiction of the game preventing that from happening. So, I wanted, I wanted to have more movement points. So we're talking about you know thirty or twenty or whatever, rather than one, two, four, or six. Um, uh, 
so that you can always so that you don't cut off particular options that it doesn't make sense to to be cut off. Um, but the the chances of things seems for now I wanted to keep them about the same, and I'll show you how I how I did that. Um, so anyway, let's abandon let's abandon the uh, the example of the game. The only thing I will say is for now, um, as you can see, you can you can it keeps going until you have negative points. The other way you could do it is it's obvious that each mile is costing four movement points. You could say, well, you don't have four movement points, so you can't go another mile. So in other words. I could have round had the system set up so it rounds down and you only get seven miles, but I decided to round up. And if I wanted to be really complicated, I could say, well, you have two movement points and you need four, so you have a two out of four chance of getting that extra mile. Um, but, you know, niggling about a single mile didn't seem worth it, so I just decided to say you can keep going until you get under zero. Um, that... That was another problem with the movement points that you you can't in the in the game uh, the original rules you can't you can't get into negative points. So if you have only one point left, that can be that one point can be wasted. And because we're talking about two points, four points, or six points, um, that can be quite a lot. That 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 roughness can be quite a lot. Whereas if we increase the number of points and the number of miles, well, there's like two points that have to be rounded up or down out of 30. It's, it's, um, it's a lot, what can I say? It's a lot, there's a lot less, there's a lot fewer rounding errors and sort of weird artifacts of, of, the, of the system. Um, okay, so having said that, let's have a look at the code and in particular how I've changed the code because I've made a lot of changes. This is one of these things where we had to had to make a change, and it sort of um, affected quite a lot of different places. So I won't go through all the code because I've explained a lot of it, um, but I will go through just the major changes. So we start, of course, with initialize, where all the um, all the variables are, and we have a new array we have have several new arrays but the first one is ep um, it's expedition points now you'll remember that em is the type of expedition that you have so zero means you can't set out at all so that won't be affected but as in if you have zero you just have to sort of change it until you don't have zero um, before you can set out but one is foot two is mounted and then three four five and six are canoe expeditions with different degrees of restriction on their movement due to a lack of bearers, um, because bearers are also rowers in this game. Ascari are, uh, which is the sort of soldiers, um, sorry, they're called guards in this game, they're called Ascari in the original board game, um, are, the fictional idea is that they're sort of, um, very jealous of their status as warriors, and so therefore they won't carry things for you. They won't row canoes. They will only they will only fight. Um, and so all the sort of work basically has to be done by. Oh, they will hunt because that's sort of acceptably, you know, that's acceptable to their role as warriors. But they won't do any other work. Um, and so you have to get bearers to do it all. But anyway, um, so we have EM, which is the type of expedition that you have. EP is the is the number of points that you have, the number of movement points that you have by um, by type. So slot zero is zero. Well, that's not relevant because you won't ever set out with zero. But if you're on foot, you get 20. If you're mounted, you get 40. And then if you're in a canoe, you get 30, 24, 18, or 12, depending on um, depending on how, how um, restricted you are. Um, this isn't directly relevant. But I will, oh yes, sorry. Oh no, I'll say this before. I will say that I've changed the name of some of the um, uh, terrain. So um, mountains are now hills. 
jungle is now forest, and as a result, um, mountainous jungle is now forested hills. Um, just because it seemed like mountains, actual mountains, should be should be so much harder than planes. You should be travelling so slowly compared to planes. Um, and I wanted them to be different, but but sort of, sort of comparable, um, and so I changed it to hills. Um, jungle, I changed it partly to get away from specifically Africa. Um, the um, I know jungles aren't just in Africa, but to me, when I hear the word jungle, I think perhaps initially of Africa. Um, perhaps when I was young, there was a bit more African exploration had a bit higher. Uh, uh, role in popular culture, I suppose, but to me, I think of Africa in particular, and I wanted this to be a bit more generic, um, which is why I initially called it into the hollow, um, into the hollow earth, of course, um, and also to make it a bit, um, a bit more realistic that it should be closer to the other terrains in terms of its effect. Jungle seems to me to mean impenetrable um, and sort of incredibly difficult to get through. Whereas forest, to me, is a bit more um, broad. I guess you could have you can have thick forest that is hard to get through, and I mean jungle technically is a type of forest. Um, although when I say forest, I think of uh, forest in 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 sort of temperate climates, I suppose. Um, but you can have you know quite thin forest as well. You can have forest where there's a few trees and it slows you down a little bit, but it's but it's not um, not too bad. And so. That sort of makes it seem more realistic. I mean, I obviously don't know. I'm not a, I'm not really a hiker, still less an explorer. But um, it's forest seems to me sounds easier than jungle, um, and and just as hills sound easier than mountain. So I changed the names, and I also changed the. We have this uh, new array called TP. And TP is how many movement points a foot expedition will lose in a given terrain uh, per mile. So it's either one, two, or four, um, and it's connected to these names. So desert is one because it's, I'm thinking not so much of like the sand dunes of Arabia, I'm thinking more of like just a, a sort of, flat plain with with but there's not much growing on it so it's just as easy to get across it's just it has other difficulties um so so uh, desert you'll only lose one hills is four marsh is four forest is two uh plains is one and then forested hills and swamp are, are four each um so that is the number of movement points lost by foot expeditions per mile um, and then there's a note here that says mounted expeditions, um, instead of one, two, and four, they lose one, two, and eight. Now, the reason for that, um, that makes it sound like these terrains are harder for mounted expeditions because they're losing more points, but actually they start with twice as many points. If we go back to this array where we have the um, number of starting points, 20 for a foot expedition, 40 for a um, canoe expedition, uh, for a mounted expedition, sorry. And so because they lose, because they start with twice as many points, but they lose twice as many points in the most rugged terrain, that means that in that terrain, they can go about as far as a foot expedition can. And that seemed realistic to me. It seemed like if you're on a flat, sort of grassy plain, well, you're going to get farther riding a horse. You're going to move more quickly riding a horse than being on foot. But then if the terrain gets really rugged, you might lose that advantage. Actually, if the terrain gets really, really rugged, then humans have an advantage because, of course, there are some terrain that humans can get through, but um, but uh, horses, you know, wouldn't. They'd... they'd break a leg or something. Um, but I've said it that if the terrain gets really rugged, then the um, the mounted expeditions lose uh, twice as many points, except for 
um, when there's other rules, the other rules still apply that um, they can't go into marsh or swamp. So obviously that, that situation would never occur. Uh, and that is the changes in terms of new um, new new variables. Those are the ones you need to remember. Um, you've noticed that I've changed this thing where it reports the terrain. Um, I've changed it to initial terrain, and it only it's only called at the beginning of the game. And I'm going to have a different um, a different way of reporting it, sort of during the actual expedition. And I've made slight changes based on that. Um, there's some slight changes deriving from this, like for example, on this page, where you choose your activity level. It used to be that there were some expeditions that couldn't choose to be cautious. So um, I've got rid of that if it's you can always be cautious, normal, or reckless. And here's where things start to get quite different. So we there we go. So we set movement points. This is a lot simpler if you've seen older videos. So um, this is just to do with adjusting your money. It's not to do with um, actual movement. So we set MP, and you remember that MP is movement points, equals dollars EP dollars EM times dollars AL over 2. So what does that mean? Well, it means that it is, if we look at that array that has the number of points, by type of expedition. We look up the slot that corresponds to EM, which is the type of expedition that's been set up now. We multiply by the activity level, and then we divide by two. The activity level is one for cautious, two for normal, and three for reckless. So um, that will mean that, that, that the points it gets from the array will be divided by two if at the activity level is one, They'll be the same if the activity level is divided by two, and they'll be um, half again will be added. They'll be times three over two if the activity level is three. Um, this is the um, system which creates new terrain if necessary, and it's surprisingly similar. Um, there's only a few changes. First of all, I didn't want to have... I wanted the terrain to be unrealistic, right? In a real expedition, you'd probably only encounter sort of two or three different types of terrain. And to make the game more interesting, you probably want more variety than you would actually expect to find in the real world. But I didn't want it to be ridiculous. I didn't want it to say, right, you go through desert for two miles, and then you come to two miles of plains, and then you've got two miles of jungle, or something like that. Um, so I wanted to have a a sort of limit on how how often things change. So first of all, if I is less than six, if you're less than six miles inland, it just automatically has the same terrain. If TE one I does not equal TE one I minus five, you automatically have the same terrain. And what that means is that each terrain has to has to stay the same for at least five miles. So there's a sort of minimum amount of realism, but again, it's still probably um, more varied than, than realism would suggest. And essentially, the random numbers are increased. So it used to be if random one to two is equal to one, then the terrain's the same as the previous area. Now it's if random 1 to 20 is greater than 1, so 19 out of 20 chance. Because, remember, we're doing this every mile, not every 10 miles. So, roughly speaking, if we multiply the um, the number, the chance of something, if we if we change the, if we multiply the random range, if it, if it only happens on a 1, in other words, if we make something 1 tenth as likely, then all else being equal, it will happen sort of roughly about as often as it happened in the previous system. Um, so this is quite complicated, but I won't go through all of it because um, it's basically the same, except that there's the change. Um, there's a few changes related to, to rivers, again reducing the chance. So a river is followed 19 twentieths of the time by more river. 
um, because we're checking every mile, not every 10 miles. That used to be um, half the time it was followed by river. Well, that, that should give it the same average length of rivers, but um, calibrated for the fact that we're checking every time. Um, okay, and then if the terrain changes, um, we'll let the, let the player know. And the only change up here, when we have the, we check for hunting, we check whether we meet someone, etc. Um, this is the bit where we, this is very straightforward. It's just saying um, we lose movement points. We, we increase how far inland we are. Um, if it's a foot or a mounted expedition, we look at the EP array. And, which is the number of points lost per, sorry, I, I should have updated that. This is TP, I got confused. We, we lose points based on the array that says for this uh, terrain, lose this many points. Um, and if it's a mounted expedition and we've got four points, we actually turn it into eight. And canoe expeditions um, don't really worry about terrain, they lose one point per mile on a river or lake, or three points in a marsh. Um, again, that is not super realistic because if you were in a river on a plain, um, rowing upstream, that's going to be a lot easier than being in hill country. Uh, because if you're in hill country, the river's probably um, flowing at a steeper angle, which means that you're working more against gravity and also the water is moving faster um, and so you've got to work harder to overcome the um, to overcome the stream but you know for now um, that's a change I might I might change that later um, so we find some value of Z and then we reduce MP which is our movement points by that this is just a, the little testing only message that tells us tells us what's happening but which I will be removing as soon as I'm you know, reassured that it's working properly. Um, whether you're able to enter works basically the same. Um, and then with lost, it's pretty much the same, except that we go if random one to 10 is greater than one, then just ignore the whole system and just go straight to the next thing. Um, and then similarly, rolling for locals, if random one to 10 is over to one, just ignore it and check our movement points instead. So why do we why do we do that? Well, because now we're checking every one mile. Before we were checking every ten miles. Well, if we want it to happen about as often, we should say we should check one time in ten. As in, if we want it to happen as often in terms of the distance travelled in the fiction of the game, um, then then we just say ninety percent of the time, don't worry about it. Just keep going. So we only check if we're lost one time in 10 and um, but it's not every 10 miles it's one time in 10 which makes it a bit more random you might get lucky and go through a swamp uh, and and never have it checked if you're lost uh, or conversely you might be very unlucky and get lost in uh, you know have a lot of checks in a, in a sort of easy territory um, but on average it should be the same and then we go to so if we're lost um, it actually just reduces our, our movement points to zero, which is what happens in the um, what happens in the uh, in the original game. I had changed it, but it it feels uh, better now when we when every turn is a day. Um, it feels like if you get lost, you probably would sort of okay, we'll find our way back and we'll we'll stop here, kind of thing, and we'll. we'll, we'll will start again in the morning. I don't know. It just instinctively feels about right. Um, if we meet locals and we happen to meet them, then it comes. It goes to this, which we haven't um, haven't coded yet. But um, that may or may not end your movement. If you you can uh, you can choose to keep going and. Um, you may be, you know, if you don't end up 
interacting with them while you might be able to sort of travel for the rest of the day. Um, and that sort of made sense to me. It's if each day is traveling, if you meet natives in the morning and you are going to be going to their village and stuff, that's going to take up the whole day. Um, so it felt that problem of there's different amounts of movement points that you're giving up depending on where you are in the turn. That felt more realistic to me here because the turn is a day and that actually does make sense. If you meet them in the evening, you're not giving up as much time because there's not as much light left to, to travel um, if you're going to sort of put in hunting, etc. Um, whereas in the other one where each movement is a, is a month, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Why, why does how far it is to the end of the month matter? How far it is to the end of the day does matter in terms of traveling, but how far it is to the end of the week or the month or something doesn't. So I put it back to the original um, the original intention. Um, so that is the change. It's a more detailed. It's essentially more detailed. It's not necessarily more realistic. Uh, it's trying to be, but you know, um, it probably feels more realistic. Um, I'm not sure if it really is. Don't confuse detail with realism. Um, but I think that in some ways it, it feels more realistic anyway. It, it makes it harder to get through um, difficult terrain. I think, that, I think the original game was sort of dealing with that by having a higher chance of getting lost. But even so, I think even if you don't get lost, I think it should be harder to get through hill, hill country than to, get through, um, than to get through an open plain. But anyway, you may not agree. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope that was useful or interesting to at least some of you, um, and I hope you will tune in next time.